Your brain needs support. And new Ollie Brainy Chews are a delightful way to take care of your cognitive health. Made with scientifically backed ingredients like Thai ginger, L-theanine, and caffeine. Brainy Chews support healthy brain function and help you find your focus, stay chill, or get energized. Be kind to your mind and get these nootropic chews at ollie.com. That's O-L-L-Y dot com. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Whoa. Landing an account this big will totally change my landscaping business. It's going to mean hiring more guys and more equipment and new trucks for the new guys to drive the new equipment in. Huh. I don't know if I'm ready. You can do this. And Ford Pro Fence Simple can help. Our experts are ready to make growing pains less painful for your business with flexible financing solutions that meet the needs of your business today when you need them. Get started at fordpro.com slash financing. Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. And I've got a guest for you today, Doug Gray, coming from Minnesota. And he is an entrepreneur and he is... Uh, founder and, and CEO of Action Learning Associates. We're going to hear all about his company, transforming businesses and people to reach their maximum potential. He's got speaking and training, consulting, coaching. He does a variety of different things. And so for the audience who's interested in these different streams and different uh, alternative careers, uh, Doug is the guest for you. So welcome, Doug. Thank you. Glad yeah. to be here. Yeah, so I know um, you know we connected, and uh, you know briefly talk about what you do, how you got there, and how you can help the audience. Well, the short answer is that since '97, I've tried to respond to client requests and whatever those demands might have been, and they've evolved. As that's probably the case for everybody in the call. Many are clinicians, many are physicians, many are uh, consultants, or various shapes and and dimensions. More recently, my focus has been on family business consulting, because as you probably know, it's 70% of our GDP, it's uh, 65 or more percent of new job creation. And you may know we're in the midst of the largest transfer of wealth in human history, some $70 trillion, which is significant. So commonly, the older folks have the assets and the younger folks really don't know how to prove their their capability or their capacity to uh, have succession planning with with clarity. So there's sometimes communication issues and conflict issues, and that's my swim lane. Interesting. And um, so talk about, you know, what Learning Action Associates does, because um, you talk about um, you talk about leadership development and uh, leadership. Um, so talk about, um, you know, what it does and, and uh, the different products and services it offers. I like the inverted name. Typically, I go uh, more alphabetically, action, learning, but uh, learning by action is, is some resonance as well. Uh, I think the short answer is I've, I've always had this red thread line of leadership development. And uh, I think one way to say it is in my 20s and 30s, I focused on uh, younger people because I was younger. So I taught in prep schools for nine years. I worked at Outward Bound schools uh, for a long time and ran a nonprofit in DC for 10 years. Through those experiences, I evolved and then worked with other leaders who needed to develop their skills. Some of those were at the University of Maryland and College Park. Others were independent business owners. Others were Fortune 100 clients. So I used to manage executive coaches with the largest global platform of executive coaches called Coach Source. And that was a delight. Did that for about eight years and learned a great deal about Fortune 100 businesses, including one of the largest healthcare insurers that I can't mention by name that you know of that lives in Kentucky or is based in. <laughs> and in that uh, tenure, I was able to work with dozens of senior execs who were sometimes not, not sure how to develop as leaders because sometimes the larger organizations are resistant to change. <laughs> I've always worked with uh, privately owned and family owned businesses. And frankly, I prefer them because they're more resilient. They define our capitalistic culture and they're very responsive to change. They need to know what to do next. So in, in summary, that's when my, my focus has evolved in the last 10 years. Interesting. I was going to say, uh, you were saying sometimes in some uh, large organizations, uh, fail to adapt and change. And I, 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 I was going to caveat that with almost all and always 
fail to change. So that's why you have like Blockbuster and Kmart and all these like, but um, <laughs> that's a, but uh, what's interesting is, um, so um, you have an ad fit protocol and um, what is that? And what is, uh, can you share a memorable story where that protocol led to significant transformation in a leader or organization? Yeah, happy to do so. One of the things that you may know from uh, your podcast interviewing is that there are a, a number of folks who can self-describe or self-declare, I'm an executive coach. I'm a behavioral <laughs> coach. I'm a behavioral consultant. Well, really, what does that mean? And the short answer is when asked, what are the protocols for coaching? Attorneys ask this all the time. Physicians ask this all the time. What are the protocols for a coaching intervention that, for instance, is going to lead to less burnout for physicians? Boom. I was hit with that question by three different vendors on the same day, and I realized, yikes, we need to develop some protocols. AdFit is what emerged. Based on a bunch of my research and subsequent dissertation and books, uh, the A and the D stands for how do we assess and define a meaningful outcome. For you, Chris, let's say you assess your strengths using validated tools, not the hokey stuff, validated tools, <laughs> define a meaningful outcome for that individual. And then in each session, managers and um, externals need to focus by asking, what do you want to focus on today? Are you aware of this intervention or interaction? And what are you taking away from the call? Minutes ago, I did this with uh, a client that I've worked with for some time. People don't know how to apply that ad fit model, but it's simple enough to do so. And I think when you need a, a little structure, it goes a long way. So that's ad fit. The reason I trademarked it is because we need protocols. Yeah. Interesting. And then um, one, the other question I have is for you is you have this OKR leadership framework and um, those are central to your leadership coaching and explain how this framework can be implemented in a business and share an example of its impact. Be happy to do so. You and I uh, are, are of an age where we were uh, raised to defer to our elders, respect them. Um, all public educational systems throughout the world are, are developed in that way. It's a top-down structure, right? Hier hierarchical structures that certainly exist in business, always will, thankfully. They need to so that there's some degree of control and investment. However, when I uh, ask our girls who are 28 and 29, and when I work with millennials and Gen Zs, when I look at cross-functional teams, they don't want this. They want this. They have agency. They've got a voice. They expect to be heard. So OKRs evolved from Silicon Valley and other places when people looked around and said, how do we manage the people at Google and Intel? They know they're brilliant. They really don't want to be told what to do. And it's structurally flat. You have 15 or more direct reports. <laughs> so the only way to do so is for each of them to articulate on a quarterly basis. Here's my main objective or three ob objectives. And here are two or three key results, KRs that I'm going to share with my manager every quarter so that you know what I'm working on. And if they don't align with the manager or the CEO's interests, <laughs> you shouldn't expect a meeting and you shouldn't, you shouldn't expect any uh, managerial support for that. The result is that innovation emerges when we have these cross-functional teams, people are more energized, retention increases, productivity increases. And I think uh, we have no choice but to go there. Not only in tech, but in every other sector. So I've worked with private healthcare physicians. I've worked with auto salvage companies that have 10,000 employees all over North America. I think OKRs are an example of how the next gens are innovating and driving different kinds of decision making and, and, and changes. Interesting. And also, um, talk about in today's increasingly digital world, how does your virtual learning program address the challenges leaders face? What are the key benefits of this virtual approach compared to traditional in-person training? We all silly uh, have silly beliefs about education, don't we? They were synchronous events that occurred in one room at one time. When you and I sat in rows and we were obliged to abide by certain expectations from one adult. As adults, that's not how we learn. We learn informally. When you have a question, you go to Google or you, you ask a friend. And informal learning is rarely taught or developed. But if you've got a digital library or system where peer groups, for instance, can interact on a shared entity or topic or focus, not only can they learn the content, but they can learn from each other with case studies. 
most MBA programs now use case studies because we uh, celebrate collaboration. We don't celebrate memorization as we once did when you and I went to school. <laughs> so all of my schooling uh, intentionally was self-directed with collaborative teams from different uh, disciplines or, or divisions. Psychology is exploding in that way. Social psychology, thankfully, is in response to the business needs of, of uh, people, those members. So what does that mean? It means digital tools are ubiquitous and they uh, will only get better. If I've got a private library to go to to get an answer for something, it could be AI generated and it could be based on Doug's writings. All my books, dissertation, there's a GBT called Gray Matters. <laughs> People can go and ask it questions and it sounds a bit like me when uh, when they seek those answers. Well, we're headed there, activated, right? Now it's holograms. Now we've got visual. Now we've got music as a result of that. Now, what do we have six months from now? Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. It reminds me of, uh, cause I was talking with one of another podcast guests and he was like saying, cause you alluded to the, the uh, traditional classroom style of learning. And um, that was like during Henry Ford and uh, you know, his, I guess the objective or department of education was to everybody should go and work in a factory and um, I'm not working in a factory, but um, you know, the, he was saying like the, um, you know, it's time to retire that type of education. And now um, now you have very innovative companies hiring, you know, people that didn't go to college, but they're stellar in their particular skill set. So moving on, talk about um, positive psychology in business. And, and then you emphasize the, the use of positive psychology in your coaching. And how do you integrate the principles of well-being and flourishing into business leadership and what results have you observed from this approach? It's been profound. Um, we've got 100 years of social science research, right? We've got maybe 20 years in something called positive psychology, which broadly can be thought of as um, the, the evidence-based tools and, and uh, data that we have to uh, help people flourish or accelerate. And if you took all of that and put them into five buckets, it's kind of like the five figures in your hand. One is more subjective, the other more uh, for more objective. And uh, the model is called P-E-R-M-A, PERMA. And uh, Marty Seligman at, at Pennsylvania and, and others have uh, validated this research with all kinds of um, meta-analyses. But the P is positive emotions. Uh, we, we choose to be positive or not. If we do, that's certainly a subjective choice, then it'll affect various things. The E is engagement, the degree to which we choose to be engaged in whatever is going to happen next. R is relationships. The quantity and quality of our relationships will determine our success. I'm not making any of these up. These are five piles of data. Imagine five stacks of books or five rooms of libraries. The M is meaning. Uh, what makes for a meaningful experience, not only in your career, but in your life and your service to other people. And the A is accomplishments. How do you define an accomplishment? Is it, for instance, achieving a certain goal of whatever, affiliation, achievement, orientation, service? Well, PERMA is a thing. It can be quantified and described and shared and, and, and measured. What is less frequently shared is another uh, aspect of psychological capital or positive psychology called psychological capital. And this is kind of like the golden egg. When business leaders embrace PSYCAP, uh, not only will we get away from financial views of capital and social views, but we'll get to uh, four dimensions that have a second order effect. I'm teasing you a little bit because I, uh, I want you to sort of imagine what could possibly be these four variables that are dynamic, they're taught, second order effect implies that they're going to have massive impact on Chris's career. Mm -hmm. Not only are they there, and they're quantifiable and measurable, and they can be taught in a short period of time, but they're easy to remember. H-E-R-O, hero. So the hero within can be described as hope. Do I have the will and the way to do a better job in my career? Efficacy is the capacity to do our job. It's a nerdy psychologist term, but it's one measure of uh, capacity is efficacy. The R is resilience, our capacity to overcome from a previous loss or challenge to that previous state or a better state. We look at all kinds of examples of resilience being taught and developed. Optimism is the O, the extent to which we choose an, an optimistic view of the world. Well, these four are quantifiable and have a second order effect on things like retention, job satisfaction, employee engagement, productivity, and profitability. Business psychologists know this, but nobody else does. If any of your 
listeners should have any questions about how to implement that in, in their work world, be happy to talk to them. <laughs> yeah, really interesting. Um, we're kind of coming to the end, but um, family owned businesses face unique challenges and um, kind of discuss a particular case where your consulting help navigate a complex family dynamic to achieve business success. So many stories. The um, short answer is that family owned business leaders are not accustomed to going to uh, a center at a college. And they don't really know if their accountant or attorney is a qualified person to help them deal with the succession issues. So they need people with expertise in business psychology. I'm trained as a behavioral psychologist. So when I look at succession, for instance, excuse me, I'll use uh, a 360 validated assessment process that I created with uh, a brilliant guy at Pepperdine <laughs> and have used with uh, 30 or 40 clients. So we've got five or 800 raters participating in this process. When we know what Chris needs to do as a successor in that family business, let's say, uh, physicians are good examples, by the way, then um, we not only know the directionality, but we know the intentionality, uh, the intensity of what those raters seven different Raider groups say that that individual ought to do to be a better leader. And those are obvious, maybe, but um, nobody else has validated it and measured it in the way that we have. So imagine the board is one Raider group, the owners, if it's a different group or Raider group, the managers, peers, direct reports, and then uh, family and friends, and then the self Raider. So if you have those six compared to the self ratings and there's a gap, now we know if Chris thinks he's here, but others say, oh, you got work to do, buddy, on one of these 50 behaviors, that gap will define. And so will the inverse, what you ought to do next. If you think you're low, but others say, no, in fact, Chris, you're doing a heck of a job in this particular behavior. That's a blind spot. One of the things that we know is that 360s are the most valid form and useful form of feedback, professional feedback, ever, ever in organizational psychology. But they're underutilized in part because people don't know how to protect the individuality and the um, confidentiality of each of the participants. I do, we do. And that process leads to deeper data that we can then use in, in succession planning. It's masterful stuff. Interesting. How can people contact you and follow you and reach out to you and check out the work that you do? Yeah, I'll give you a few different URLs. Uh, for that last example, assessnextgen.com, A-S-S-E. Yes, nextgen.com. Evolved into the NextGen peer groups, which are open to associations and uh, and as well as the public. And then uh, action-learning.com, uh, okrleadership.com. The most recent book is uh, the Success Playbook for NextGen Family Business Leaders. And that's probably all you need. Oh, and I'm on LinkedIn. <laughs> nice. Yeah, for all the audience, let's thank uh, Doug for coming on and give his socials a like and follow. Really interesting concepts. And uh, thanks so much for coming on. My pleasure. Thanks for asking. Glad to be resourced.